Welcome to Stephen Johnson's stocks. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting week, mid-850, 850 bucks, up about 1200 on the month. But more importantly, upon reflection, I've noticed that for me, first year, I lost consistently. For me, second year, I was like, half the time I'm winning, half the time I'm losing in terms of month-by-month -month profit loss. So hopefully going on to what will be a third year, it'll be like 70, 80% all profitable. And the amount of strategy refining I've done, the amount of like kind of changes and discipline, the amount of, I just don't put myself in situations, like stuff like holding shorts overnight, swinging shorts, shorting midday random spikes, keeping myself away from the low floats. All this stuff I've kind of learned in the second year, whether in the first year I was more learning just what the fuck to do, like what's the point in resistance? What is low flow? What is high float? How does volume and flow work together? So I really see me learning curve and I'm 100% positive I can be a profitable trader and let's get into it because it's already too long. I'll be super quick with this. Uh, took roughly 10 trades this month. Lost more than I've won, which is weird because generally when I'm trading all right, I'll be hitting the 60s, always 60s, sometimes 70s. And right now the market's a bit hit or messy. I'm not seeing many opportunities every now and then. Like a guy, someone who's addicted to cigarettes, if they go too many days without one, they just have to have one. And it's like that with trades. You just like after you go one or two days of staring at the market, or even even a matter of hours. Once you go a few hours and you go a day without taking a trade, you're like fuck, I'll just take something. And this is when these silly unnecessary losses come in. Because really, I should have just not traded all week. But there was one golden opportunity that was kind of the get out of jail card that was like an epic trade you'll see coming up. And this was a really nice winner, the stars aligned. And other than that, it's kind of been mixed, like three green days, three red days, two nothing days. But if you cut your losses re relatively tight and you really play the good opportunities and the winning opportunities to the full capacity, then still nice to be like 860 up on the week, a little over 1100 on the month. Just want to say this month out green, I mean, it's been quite inconsistent. Obviously, four green months, two red months, two green months, three red months, and then hopefully this will be a green month. But in hindsight, you think in your first 12 months was, was all red. And then your next 12 months was all green and red. And then you think the next 12 months should be pretty much all green. So, there's, there, I mean, it, there's undoubtedly absolute progress here. Yeah, I mean, I went from losing all the time to winning and losing, like, what's this? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, like, this will be like seven, seven green, six red, or six green, six red. I've gone from all red to 50% green, 50% red, to hopefully like 80% green. So, undoubtedly, I am on the way to becoming a professional, full-blown trainer. It's just been a choppy two to three year journey. So you will have seen from the Excel that I had one really good trade and the stars really kind of aligned on this one. I was just watching on my balcony, I was a little bit thinking it would be a quiet day, but then I had a real stroke of luck. So I was obviously short on this day on the 21st of August. And I remember this popping up at pre-market into the 150s and 160s. So I immediately looked back at the chart history and thought, okay, well, what kind of company is this? And I immediately saw this gap down. And generally for any kind of pharmaceutical company, it tells you it's a tonics pharmaceutical holding. For any pharmaceutical drug manufacturer, anyone that does kind of studies, these big gap downs are generally a sign that something's gone wrong in a study and it's gone from the fours to the ones. So generally these penny stocks have one or two studies, one or two products in development, and if one thing goes wrong with it, then the company can be in serious danger. The other kind of indicator is that things have gone wrong before and that the company's losing a lot of money. I like to always go back like a couple of years and see that they've, they've got a history of gap in the stock or just to sell all of the shares. So that's generally an indicator that they're trying to push press releases out to get the stock price up pre-market and then they just sell a whole bunch of shares or existing to raise money or existing people who have been fucked in the stock because they've believed in it are just immediately selling to get out and they're creating press releases to, to try and pump the price up because everyone wants to sell all of the time. But what really got me, so I mean, 
it's a six million float. The whole six million are pretty much underwater, more or less. And every time the stock spikes up, everyone's desperate to get out. And anyone who sees this will recognize that's a normal one's too long and everyone wants to short it. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that the stock goes down. This is almost enough to make it a good short. But what I really want to look at is what's the news on the day that's, that's pushing it up. So if we go to the, the 21st, uh, the news is this news here at seven o'clock in the morning. Let's bring it up. And we see tonics, pharmaceuticals. This says a lot of stuff that you don't understand, but it doesn't matter. The present results and retrospective analysis of two double blind randomized placebo 12 week studies related to PTSD. So PTSD, diabetes generally don't perform as well as stuff like cancer. If it's cancer news, more people have cancer and care about cancer. So more people buy cancer because it's more, I don't want to say it's more important, but it's more prevalent in people's lives. But the important thing is, yeah, the press release is Tonix is presenting a poster. So this is the news. It's not a 50 million contract when it's not earnings. It's not a, a big deal that someone's doing with a bigger company. They're presenting a poster. Okay. Poster is fucking meaningless. A company's value shouldn't go up 30% because it's presenting a poster. That's the first real warning sign. They're presenting at a 2018 military health system research symposium. But the other crazy thing that I've found was the poster that they're, they're, they're releasing data on. So Tonix recently reported that the phase three P301 study was stopped at the pre-planned interim analysis because it did not achieve a study continuation. However, they are creating a poster of the results that will be presented at the conference. And I was just thinking, well, if you've just had a study stop recently, this is probably why you've had this big gap down. So I'd imagine that they've created a poster on a study that didn't get continued if the results of the study that failed. So I'm like, it's not just a poster, but it's a poster from a failed study as well, or a study that wasn't advanced for whatever reason from the board of whatever does this study. And I'm just like, all the shareholders are underwater, the company's failing, the news is a fucking poster that it's up 30% on, which is just ridiculous in my opinion. And then the nail in the coffin was, when I was kind of looking at the earnings, I was like, you're losing like 50 million a year. So if your studies aren't going very well and you're losing 40 and 50 million a year and all your shareholders are bagged, I'm like, this probably will go down as far as it's come up. And when it was pushing in the, the 140s, 150s, 130s, I was in the 140s, 150s. I was thinking this is at least giving back everything it's came up with today. I had no idea it would go down to the ones. I kind of underestimated it, which was cool. But literally when this popped up at 7.30 in the morning, I was short in the 7.40, short in the 7.50s. I was happy for this to go to the, the 180s, 190s, 2s. I was only taking very small positions. When it dropped and it couldn't bounce properly in this area here, just added. So my, my original short was like 150s, added again here in, the, well, high 150s and I added in the low 150s. Then when it washed, I held my whole position because I was like, I'm holding this for a 10, 12% gain. Added more here, took a little bit off at the end of the wash, shorted more into the pop, took some off into the wash here. When it spiked up again and made this double top here and here, added to a short again. And then I took the rest off into the wash here. So it's just basically uh, shortened strength, covering weakness all the way down. But trying in general, the add to me position, add to the winner, add to the winner, add to the winner. And little did I know, I mean, I was like, I've made 1700 bucks, this is brilliant. Little did I know it'd be down in the one. I was going for the 130s, I ended up taking it off at about 139, 138. A little bit early. I uh, didn't think it would get down to the 129s, but then you've got all the, all of the longs who chased this, all of the little piggies. And then you've also got kind of a lot of the longer term shareholders that thought maybe it'll bounce, maybe it'll bounce, and then they probably not write the news. And then the next day they're just like, fuck this. And everyone's sold off. Then the next day everyone's sold off. Then we've got news that the, the company directors stepped down. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, and then on the 22nd, like the directors just quit. <laughs> so like, it's just the company's just fucked. And it was a good shot and I'm proud of it. So this is TLRY and I'm, I'll speed it up, but I'll slow it down at the right time. But weed stock, multi-year high, hot sector. Uh, you've got this kind of ABCD, the push in the morning, then it settles. 
And then what I'm really doing is um, I'm kind of, but this is a separate short IGC, but what I'm doing with TLRY is you can buy these kind of dips near VWAP and then wait for the like the 10.30 breakout, which is what I've done. And it's going pretty well. I'm thinking, yep, multi year high, weed's hot, but then I've slowed it right down now. Watch just what happens. So I've got my position from about the 41.50s, then all of a sudden TLRY just cracks out of nowhere. Turns out Citroen Research pushed out some bad tweet and it and it drops right down to VWAP like a buck share or something like that. And I'm immediately underwater much more than I want to be. But the question is, what should I do? Right now I've just jumped into a short, took six took 60 shares short, which is quite a lot of a $40 stock. Well, then boom, I'm up to 120. And it's like why one, why did I switch biases when this conflict in indicators? And because it's why am I going short a multi-year high hot, hot sector stock? And two, why am I shorting so aggressively? Why am I chasing weakness? And what ended up happening is maybe if I waited for a bit more of a push, say 50% back up, I could have took a small profit. But at the same time, this stock is super strong. It's in a hot sector. It's 52 week highs. It's very, it's got a lot of volume. One tweet by Citroen Research, it's, it's likely that I could get bought back up. And the reality is I just don't know. I don't have a clue. I'm, I'm just gambling and I'm disappointed with this, so I wanted to, to show it. And we'll leave it at that. One final change that I, I definitely have made is if I don't feel like trading, if I feel like I'm in a bad discipline zone, I just take the day off. It's better than having a 400, 500 red day. And I also don't take big positions unless I know where the top is. I don't like to be going into the red 100, 200, 300 to see where it goes because that's where it can go really wrong. I prefer to be like red 50 bucks, red 100 bucks, something that I can mentally and physically cut. And then average into a winner when you know that it's got good propensity to go down. And then I'm always risking 100, 150. I'm never down 600 and thinking I can't cut this and then before you know it, it's two grand. I can't trust myself in those situations so I don't put myself in them anymore. Comment green if you think I can have a green, what the fuck's the month, August? Comment green if you think I can have a green August. Uh, I really think that this is the this is the final corner, guys. It's been it's been two fucking years of putting, making these videos and learning everything and taking you guys on this journey and the balcony moments we will not fail and the dancing around my living room and Sarah and all the shit. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for staying with me on it. And I can't wait to give you all the stuff that I learned for free, so you can do it too.